You like ripping dingers and popping wheelies? Go to lsdash.com. We're giving away this thousand horsepower turbo LSD body. Every dollar you spend is an entry to win. Ninety-four millimeter turbo, Forge LS Holly EFI Power Glide transmission. This thing is bad to the bone and can be yours if you go over to lsnasty.com. Four seats and a big ass trunk for all your friends. This thing's a true muffin cat peeler. It is the highest horsepower car we have ever given away. Double bead locks, check. Forge LS, check. Thousand horsepower, oh yeah. QA1 suspension. You bet. You can take this thing, put all your friends in it, go cruise around because it is a true, real deal street car. Or you go to the track and bust them out. Go to lsnasty.com, check out all of our brand new merchandise. We got hats, shirts, stickers, socks, key tags, posters, you name it, we got it. And every dollar you spend is an entry to win. lsnasty.com or the first link in the description below. Go and get entered. All right, guys, uh, filming a quick little video here. Uh, never really filmed a video like this before, but uh, I was feeling a little bit inspired today um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, I watched this guy on TikTok, Danny uh, Kiderling, I think his name is, uh, and he does a bunch of welding videos. I'm kind of like fascinated with the welding. I think the welding stuff's pretty cool. I could barely weld. Um, I shouldn't say I could barely weld. I built some turbo kits. I don't do it for a living uh, directly, you could say, but I enjoy welding. I, I like some cars I don't like working on sometimes I don't like working on cars but I seem to always enjoy the welding part of it and I find it fascinating so I watch his videos a lot and he's a badass welder super inspirational dude and he was just uh, in a UTV accident and was uh, paralyzed so um, kind of like shocking because I watch a lot of his videos and then all of a sudden like he's in a hospital and stuff so i'll put a link to his gofundme down in the description below i don't talk with him um personally i've never like dm'd him i just watch his videos and i like what he does so if you guys feel uh, impelled to help out or you got a few dollars or something i like to use my platform for what's good and uh maybe just you know throw him a couple bones and um you know might mean more than you think so uh but he's super inspirational and even after his injury he's like extremely inspirational and i was like you know what i watch all of his welding videos because i'm trying to learn and i figure i might as well use my platform to uh do some sort of good and maybe express to you guys what i have learned so far so i figure if we're going to talk about welding i'm no welding expert so don't quote me on any of this stuff uh, but i figure i should probably talk about the stuff that i suck at the most because that's what i try to do the most to then make it the thing i do best so i used to suck at welding uh completely and i decided to build a set of zoomies which took forever it was like 10 years of welding and i got decent enough to stick stuff together where i could put them on a car and run them and uh, nothing would happen they wouldn't fall apart and then I got better, then I learned how to actually weld properly, and then I learned how to, um, you know, do it all with stainless, which I feel like is pretty easy to weld. Mind you, I can take weld pretty good. I'm a below average MIG welder. I could stick stuff together. That's about it. So aluminum, I don't really do the most because I was intimidated and I was scared by it. And uh, I'd always just blow holes right through because I didn't know what I was doing. But because I didn't know what I was doing, I would never do it. Uh, and then lately, uh, Matt's been teaching me more. I've been watching more of just like welding videos in general. And I've gotten better where sometimes I can do pretty good. So that's kind of the reason why I am talking to you about welding today. I am no welding expert, so don't take this to the bank. But if you're at home and you're looking at your car and you're like, man, I really want a turbo kit. And the only thing stopping you from doing uh, a turbo kit is you don't want to pay someone to weld. Go to Harbor Freight and get you a welder and just figure it out. You might do one and it might work. Air might flow from one to the other and it might not look good and you could run it for a while and sell it to someone and then you get better the more you do and by the end you could have yourself a badass turbo kit. So um, that's why I want to talk to you guys about welding today. So I'm going to give you guys the tips and tricks of what me, a non-great welder, does to stick stuff together. So all right, let's get into it. One, Danny always says in his videos, remember your ABCs, always be comfortable. I never understood that until I started welding in like a non messed up position and my welds would look good. And then it took me a while to put two and two together. Like, hey, if I'm comfortable when I weld, the welds look good. So step one is I'm stealing that right from his book is always be comfortable. Step two, okay, is proper planning prevents piss poor performance. So 
you prepare your materials correctly, they will be a whole lot easier to weld. Uh, especially with aluminum, this stuff's got to be clean. Um, don't leave it laying on the ground in your shop. I've learned that the hard way. Uh, try, if you can, if you're using flap discs and porta bands, use a blade specific for aluminum, for aluminum and everything else for stainless, for stainless uh, or mild steel or whatever. Um, that's a good basis. The third tip that I find the most useful is if you get the right materials, like maybe even a little bit overkill, it makes welding that much easier. So I'm not talking smack on anything, but this is some vibrant material, okay? It already comes like with this polish on there. Um, I don't like it that much because when you cut it with a porta band, it scratches like that, as you guys can see. That's just from the porta band. Um, and it already comes polished, so. Unless it's like perfect and you could just weld it right out, I don't really like messing with it. Uh, also, it's very thin. I like to use uh, some 11 gauge from Race Parts Solutions. So if you put them side by side, look at how much thicker that is. This stuff here is serious. So um, all of the turbo kits that we do, all the aluminum, we use this 11 gauge stainless. It's thicker, you can weld it hotter, it's stronger because it's that much thicker. Um, and the weight difference, the weight savings are not worth it. You're not like, oh, I got to use this because it's lighter. It's going to make my car that much lighter. Stick to the 11 gauge. When you go out there, talk to Wade. Say, hey, you know, I need some 3 inch, 3 and a half, 4 inch, 5 inch. You know, I need some 90s or 45s. And be like, hey, you got it in that 11 gauge that John always talks about because this stuff here rocks. So I highly recommend this. So I'm not very good at welding this. I'm going to start out by just welding, but welding some of this stuff together. Um, so, uh, the last thing I'd say is just clean up your, your ends. I got one of these handy little things off Amazon. And then you just run it right around here and clean it up. Now the vibrant stuff, what's weird is it's like super soft and it doesn't want to like go around it as you can see. This is another reason why I don't like the vibrant stuff. Now I know like you expert fabricators are like, oh I use the vibrant stuff all the time and it's great. Well it's, that's great for you, but this is me. Now here's the race part stuff, the 11 gauge. Seems to go around there pretty good. All cleaned up, nice, deburred, whatever. So, uh, we'll start off just by welding um, these together with the aluminum. This one's like literally just absolutely hammered. This one's absolutely hammered on that side right there. So that weld's gonna suck. So we'll just line it up, get a couple tacks on there. I use a Miller Synchro Wave 210. I think it's a pretty decent welder. I'm not, not going crazy about it. Um, the last thing with welding aluminum, now I say I'm talking about aluminum welding because the stainless stuff is pretty straightforward, just don't have any gaps and weld her up. Um, don't dip the tungsten in the puddle, uh, use the right filler rod, stuff like that. Uh, the aluminum I feel like is so much harder. It's gotta be clean. I got a rag with acetone on there. Wipe down all of your joints and everything you're welding with acetone. Um, just make sure it's clean. Wipe down your filler rod with acetone. Make sure it's clean. Again, not a welding professional, just doing, telling you guys what I do when every once in a while a miracle occurs and I have some nice welding. So, we got that stuff taken care of. I got a nice sharp piece of tungsten. I got the right cup on there. Wipe down the filler rod with your acetone. Make sure it's clean. All right, so here we are. We are ready to weld. Uh, this sucker's turned up pretty high for how thin that is. We'll go like 120 amps. <coughs> So Matt always gets on me, stop looking at the amps, stop worrying about the amps, just go off of what you see. So when I'm welding aluminum, I get like one of two things, either a super flat puddle or a super tall puddle. So the tall puddle is when it's too cold and like I just, as soon as I start welding, I start shoving filler rod in there, it doesn't get good penetration. The super flat puddles are when maybe I'm a little bit hot and I need to back it off. So I'm like the stainless, stainless does it too, uh, but with this, you really got to use your foot pedal, modulate it and um, and try to be consistent. So I'll tack it up on two sides and then we'll try to uh, get in a nice comfortable position and weld some out. So Matt's always on me about uh, not just absolutely cramming um, filler in it as soon as I start welding that's like my go-to tendency is just go ham with it um, so I've been trying not to do that as much as I can so we got one pack on there as you guys can see it's tacked up looking good and again I'm welding this is the stuff I don't like to weld because I'm not good at welding it All right, 
We got two tacks on there. Ugly on that one. All right, so now let's get into a, a, a comfortable position. I'm gonna kind of brace it up with these two pieces of aluminum there so it can't move. And I'm gonna try to weld around it. And just see how we do. I'm gonna start right here, just do a nice little run. And uh, I like to rush because I'm just like terrified of burning a hole through it. So I'm just like trying to go as fast as I can. So I struggle really hard about being nice and calm and smooth. And just remember with all this stuff, like you can always just start over. It might cost you another like $20 for another bend, but if you mess it up, just start over. I'm like the worst, I have a hole there and I'm literally like four things of filler rod just trying to cram them in there. So we're not gonna do that here. We're just gonna go nice and slow. And if I mess up, I'll just post in a video and you guys can tell me I suck at welding. So panicked at the start. I don't know if you guys saw that. I got it like I tried to stick the, the filler in there before I was ready. Um, and then I think we recovered well. So for someone who's not a welder, that's where we're at. Not terrible. Uh, I'm very light on the pedal, but I have good penetration through there as you guys can see. She's welded in there. And hey, we're not blowing holes in it. Successful. Successful. See, this is my good, I'm just filming my practice. I'm like literally in here talking to myself, whether you guys are here filming with me while I'm practicing or not. So let's try it again. Same thing, but I'm gonna try not to just like panic and shove this in there right out the gate. Do a nice little run. Uh, I struggle with my torch angle. So like, I, instead of keeping the torch pointed at it, right, I just end up going like, holding it like that, and then I get a flame coming out the end. So again, something I gotta work on. I was doing good and I got to the one area where I said, oh, it's like it's just like hammered in and uh, had a pretty big gap and I got a little keyhole action going on there. So that's what you call a keyhole when it's got literally a hole. It's kind of getting hot. When you literally got a hole where you're welding. So we'll let that cool down. I'll do some on the other side and then we'll, uh, we'll attack that once it cools off. So far not doing terrible. It's good practice. I put this on a car of mine if I had to. Okay, average, average. I'm not getting like the nice beads that I want. This stuff's so thin, I'm like uh, barely on the, the pedal. Um, and I'm just like, I could blow through it any, any second. So I'm ready to get done with this and weld some of the 11 gauge stuff. Hey, we're getting better. We're getting better. This is decent right here. A little bit, oh, just a hair cold, but it's, I'd rather be just a touch cold than blowing a hole right through it. I'm about out of filler, so I'm starting to lose my comfortability, but I'm not listening to my guy here, and I'm just being uncomfortable welding it. Stubborn John has entered chat.
damn we're mate we're doing our we're doing all right taking my time being comfortable being cool that's all you got to do right here let me get a new filler rod Hey, we got her. I think she's got this little six section left here, trying to burn my fingers off when I move it. This thing's like 10,000 degrees, and we're done. Wow, not gonna lie on camera, that's the first time I've literally welded um, this thin aluminum without blowing a hole in it. It's big right here. I'm gonna pick it up like this because this thing is like nuclear hot. Look at that! Look at that! It's not terrible. Not terrible. Not terrible at all. Alright, we'll set that guy down over here. Let's try some of this 11 gauge stuff. This stuff here is just so much thicker. It's literally unreal. Now this right here doesn't fit absolutely perfect. It's a little bit off. But we'll be alright. This is more real world. Like you're not every fitment, especially when you're doing hot side and cold side, every once in a while you're gonna have to fill a little bit of a gap. You don't like to, but it happens. So we're gonna tack on this. We could weld this a little bit hotter. You don't have to worry about blowing a hole in it so much. I already wiped it down with acetone before I started filming, by the way, before you guys start yelling at me. Got a nice tack on that side. Rookie hour. Alright, so... I touched the tungsten into the puddle. Um, old John would just fire that sucker up and keep going. New John, I took the tungsten out, cleaned it. Uh, I'm gonna use the other side of the <laughs> So what you can do is if you do that a lot, you can take your tungsten and sharpen both ends. When you do that, just flip it around if it still fits through there. But you know, I try not to do that. So we, um, we're good to go now. We're gonna try to weld her out. I'm tacked on both sides. You got my makeshift little brace for it try to lay some nice little beads here um hopefully this looks better than the other one if not what i'm saying just doesn't make sense Hey, I think that this looks way better than the other side, or than the other piece right there. Look at that. I'd say that's quite respectable and decent. I mean, if I got that on something, I'd be pretty happy with it. Listen, I'm no Steven Eads, okay? I'm no Steven Eads, not claiming to be. I'm just some guy that has a welder in a shop who's trying to learn how to weld, okay? Just let's be fair here. See if we can keep that going. The tough part with aluminum is staying consistent. I mean, I guess with really all welding is staying consistent.
looking good so far. That's where we're at. That's where we're at, everyone. You could pause and take a screenshot and like highlight it with like a red box and post it on my Instagram and say you suck where it doesn't look good. But so far, that's where we're at. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep the wheels turning here. Sucker's getting hot now, so it's getting you gotta touch it very quickly. Looking pretty good. I'm comfortable. I'm not rushing. Now I got a gap on this side, so shit's about to get real here. I'm gonna get a new piece of filler, clean it off. I got a good example here of where uh, it kind of flattened out. I was a little bit hot and I started to come off the pedal and you can see the puddle start to rise. So pretty much when you're laying your beads, right? Every time you dab, if it's like flat and flush with the aluminum that you're welding, it's probably a little bit too hot. You want it to have a little bit of a arch to it. Um, but I mean, this stuff's pretty thick, so you can weld it hot. And it, it's like, with the 11 gauge, you, you can get away with it pretty good. If you do that on um, that vibrant stuff, game over bro game over so all right we're getting to the uh to the gap right here get comfortable take my time Got like halfway through it, started to panic. I'm like at the end of it, I'm so close. did it we're welded out i don't know why i hold it over there like it's got post flow like on the uh the other stuff all right guys so here we are this is the uh the vibrant the uh you know the a lot harder stuff to weld as you can see i think it looks pretty good you can see where i'm a little bit zigzaggy and it's not a perfect uh weld all the way around but for me no complaints this guy here the 11 gauge i welded it much hotter uh, didn't have really any concerns of it blowing through and um, I think that uh, it's hot as hell, so I can't pick it up. I think that this looks a whole lot better. So there are my tips and tricks, guys. I'm just trying to do this video to uh, maybe inspire you guys. If you're sitting at home today, if you got nothing going on after work and you want to do something, go out there and try and do it. You know, um, I try to use this platform for what's good. And I was inspired to weld more by uh, Danny's videos on uh, TikTok and um, yeah, so he's an inspiration to me. I'm trying to be an inspiration to you guys. Um, go out there and do it. Go and try something. You want to build your car? Build it. You want to build a turbo kit? Go after it and do it. Try it. If your buddies are over there and say, hey, man, that looks like shit, you know what? They're, haters are going to hate regardless. So um, that's kind of what I learned is they'll be your buddies. They'll be your friends. They'll be people you don't even know. Haters going to hate, and there's nothing you can do about it. So you just got to be proud of what you're doing. For someone who doesn't weld, I've paid for shittier welds before. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm getting my practice in. So I just thought I'd turn the camera on, film a little bit while I'm practicing. Film a little bit while I'm practicing. And uh, guys, go out there and do it. Go have some fun. Build your cars. Uh, weld stuff. Turn some wrenches. Have fun. So uh, that's going to wrap today's video. Guys, comment down below if you guys are any welders. You guys do this for a living. You guys are professionals. Comment some tips and tricks. What would you recommend I do to get better? Um, I'm an open book. Uh, I'm always learning everything I do. 
and uh, I love to learn. I love to get better. I don't really want to do anything unless I'm good at it. So if I'm welding stuff, I want to be good at it. And um, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. It means the world that you guys stop in every day, watch. Um, it means more to me than you guys will ever understand uh, because I get to live my dream. So um, thank you guys for your, all your continued support. Uh, thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for liking videos. Thank you guys for picking up some merchandise. Try to reward you guys by giving away uh, you know, a badass 1,000 horsepower turbo G-body because someone's going to win that. But uh, I couldn't thank you guys enough for all the support. So I've been doing this for a couple years and hopefully many more to come. And uh, hopefully the channel keeps growing, keeps getting bigger, and you guys keep watching. So thank you guys so much. Comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in tomorrow's upload.